Hell Divers 2 is a game where you bring democracy to the galaxy one bullet at a time as you wade your way through swaths of automatons and giant cockroaches. And I'm going to be honest, it brings exactly what you'd expect to the table. A combination of Starship Troopers and the bad ending to any Terminator movie. The only way to describe it is fantastic. Hey guys and welcome to the channel, I'm Zemore, the dad in DPS, and today we're going to be reviewing Helldivers 2. Now this is an absolutely fantastic game that I was humming and hawing about picking up, because it's had a bunch of really good press and some bad press. And the bad press has been mainly centred around the connectivity issues and, you know, your ability to actually log in and play the game, where people were literally just keeping the game logged in 24 7 so that they could play it and because of that i was kind of like uh, maybe i'll wait until to fix these issues however since picking it up i have not encountered any connectivity issues at all and it's been a relatively seamless experience so yeah absolutely fantastic game and seamless experience so far for me but we'll get into the nitty gritty about what the game's about and what you do in it so let's talk about the universe that Helldivers 2 is set in. You come from a planet called Super Earth, because regular Earth wasn't good enough. And if I'm looking at the map of Super Earth, it's actually just regular Earth. They just went, you know, what we need to make us sound cooler for some reason. So we are Super Earth now, apparently. Um, and the government of Super Earth is probably very similar to the one from Starship Troopers, where, you know, citizens have very good rights and non-citizens really don't. And on top of that, being a citizen sucks because you get sent to a bug planet to fight horrifying giant cockroach demons that are going to rip out your organs and feast on your flesh. Um... We are almost certainly the invaders here. It says we're liberating planets. We are not liberating them. We are taking planets forcefully from the inhabitants of them, whether it be the bugs or the automatons. And as a result, we've started a war that we will probably never be able to win and we'll wage it for all eternity. And that's fine because that's, you know, going to make the game <laughs> last longer because that's the point of it. You're in a never-ending battle and you are literally just cannon fodder being thrown through a fine mesh grate and... It is absolutely fine because the premise of the game isn't a unique one, isn't a new one, but it is a fun one because it's just a never-ending war that humanity almost certainly started and we are never getting out of. Now, as I said, there are two major factions of enemies that you come against. There are the automatons, which are essentially terminators. Um, they have a myriad of different weapons. They have basically at-ats from freaking Star Wars and a load of different robotic colossi that can completely screw you up, essentially. Now, I didn't play Helldivers 1, but from what I've seen, the old faction that used to be in their place was the Cyborgs, and it seems the Automatons have replaced them uh, either totally or they are the Cyborgs just fully automatized. I'm not really sure. No one really is, because they've not been told. But essentially, the Automatons are one of the major enemies, and they are the harder of the two. I've came up across lots of different Automaton missions and lots of different bug missions, and the Automatons definitely seem to be the smarter of the enemies, um, and they do have harder to deal with weaponry when you first start the game. That'll probably get easier as I play more and I get through the game, but the Automatons are definitely tough to go up against as a newbie. Then we have the Bugs. Now, the bugs are pretty much the similarities to the ones from, you know, uh, Starship Troopers are there because, you know, giant insectoids. Um, and they are varied as well. You get little small swarmy ones. You get bigger ones that can sort of glide and fly around, jump towards you in quick succession. You get ones that charge you that are heavily armored. You get big ass ones that um, fire out freaking fire oh, well it looks like fire it's probably bile or acid or some crap like that um and they do all manner of different things and then there's really big ones that are you know far scarier and far more dangerous than the small ones and not easy to take out with just basic weaponry and generally the enemies on both sides follow a similar similar pattern they both kind of fill similar niches to what they do but i definitely find that the robots are far harder so that's pretty much the world building. We're up against humanity's two greatest fears, creepy crawlies and AI trying to kill us. So, you know, a typical Monday. Now this is where you come in. You are a Helldiver who 
literally dives into hell because you're put in a drop pod and dropped from orbit. Once you land, you then have to complete a series of missions, clear a series of outposts, whether it be bug nests or, you know, automaton factories, and do a bunch of different objectives, collect different things, and gather resources, and make your way home through slaughtering everything that you come against. And you can do this with a myriad of different tools at your disposal. Now, customizability of your character is quite good. Um, your armor does actually have an effect on how your character functions. For example, light armor makes you more mobile, heavy armor makes you more tanky. And there are additional effects that these armors can have. So picking your armor and the different things you're wearing can actually have a diverse effect on how your character functions. On top of that, you have the usual myriad of different main weapons you can have from machine guns to flamethrowers and i'm not really going to go into that because you know it's pretty basic thing for most games if you can think of a weapon that you've seen in games like halo or freaking uh cod you're gonna probably find something similar to it in this um so it's not really that important uh, but there is one customization to your character that is very important and that would be the stratagem mechanic now stratagems are essentially these little button combinations you enter, which then gives you essentially like a grenade that you throw, and then it will activate a different thing. So, for example, one of the stratagems will tell your ship to launch a drop pod for ammunition. So it'll drop that down, you'll pick it up, and then you'll be able to reload. And this has a set cooldown. Other stratagems can drop weapons such as rocket launchers or um, a big-ass machine gun which then you can pick up and then it helps you take down bigger, tankier enemies. Another one can drop uh, a minefield or a like a stationary turret, which will sit there and just mow down any enemies automatically. And then there is the crazy ones, which drop nukes from orbit. Now, they don't necessarily drop nukes, but it, some of the, the, the absolute disgusting ones literally blow up entire outposts when they hit them. And this can be customized through your ship menu. Your ship actually allows you to buy stratagems, buy different things, and buy parts of the ship that allows your stratagems to reload quicker or have a shrapnel mechanic which makes them much more devastating. There's all sorts of things you can buy and all sorts of things that you can customize. I'm not going to go too deep into it because you're best playing it to explore this kind of thing. But essentially, stratagems are probably one of the most important things for your character because they make a massive difference to your battlefield interactions. And I'll be honest, they also make a very big difference with your interactions with other players. Now, what I mean by this is Helldivers 2 has a friendly fire mechanic. You can, and quite often will, kill your teammates, whether it's on purpose or completely by accident. And sometimes it's your fault, sometimes it's theirs, sometimes people get in the way, sometimes people walk into the Hellfire. And yeah, I've seen plenty of my fellow Helldivers explode in comical ways. And I've been killed by a few Helldivers in comical ways. Some of them on purpose, and if I ever find these people again, I will shit on their grave. Now, we spoke about the customization. Let's talk about the actual combat. Now, Helldivers 2 has an interesting mechanic that I have seen in a few games, but not very many of them. And that is the ability to physically dive. And essentially, if you've ever dove in real life, um, when you jump, you at a distance, you hit the ground, and then you can't really move. Well, in Helldivers 2, this basically allows you to dive out of the way of enemy attacks and potentially launch a counterattack at them by shooting them while you're on the ground on your back or on your side. And I found that if I'm being swarmed by a load of bugs, for example, I'll jump backwards onto my back and continue shooting them. This usually gives me enough time to get up and then leg it away from them, as well as kill a bunch of enemies. And it's quite a fun mechanic that I don't... I really don't know why it's not in more games. You know, being standing crouching and prone isn't the only way people can move <laughs> and a dodge mechanic well great the rolling ones in a lot of games um aren't realistic i mean most people don't i've never physically seen anyone do that in real life without making it a complete joke <laughs> you know a roly-poly isn't really realistic especially when you're wearing very heavy combat armor now when it comes to the guns the variety of them is is relatively 
diverse and they all play in very different ways which is great because obviously if you're playing a game like this you don't want every gun to feel the same now what i'll say about certain guns and i'll use the sniper rifle as a good example from one i've went different guns work better on different enemies so for example the sniper rifles i didn't find them particularly useful against the bug enemies but against the automatons they were far more useful and the reason for that is they have a clearly defined face versus the bugs who sort of have a torso you know some of them do have heads some of them are really low armored and easy to kill but the bigger more heavily armored ones have their kind of vital areas protected and you sort of need to shoot into their buck cheeks so there is that kind of thing where i think certain weapons have a certain use against certain enemies so bringing certain things to certain combat zones is probably not the best idea. And I definitely think against the bugs, you're better off with the basic machine gun, which let me say the basic gun that you get in this game is absolutely fantastic. I find it a really fun gun to use. It's really, you could use it in full auto fire or you can just kind of tap it. And that's how I tend to use it more often than not. And it just feels like a really satisfying weapon to use. And there's lots of weapons in the game i'm not going to go into all of them but there's lots of weapons and you'll learn how that goes as you can unlock more things and do more things and you know get into the game more then we obviously have the stratagems now the stratagems again are really diverse and do different things from you know pinpoint strategic blasts to absolutely firebombing an area and i think this all comes down to personal preference some of them are definitely more overpowered than others i've seen certain people that are higher level than me come in and literally they you, you don't get a chance to do anything they throw a stratagem into an area and everything's dead everything is burning and you're just sitting there going huh cool um when do i get that so there is certain things that are incredibly powerful now i'm not playing on the hardest difficulties all the time so i'm not seeing that all the time either but there is certain things that are definitely far 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 far, far more powerful than other things and that is the same with any game i think as you know the developers find things that are a wee bit too broken they're gonna nerf things they're gonna buff things that are maybe not as strong as they wanted it to be and for a game that's just came out it is very diverse and very fun so the basic mission structure of the game is you land on the planet and you are given a main objective now this main objective is the thing that you have to do in order to finish the mission and it can be as varied as blowing up ammunition dumps to killing eggs of the bugs there's a massive kind of group of different things you can do on top of this you have a bunch of side objectives now the side objectives are pretty simple you can go to outposts where it could be a hole in the ground for the bugs where you need to chuck grenades in and blow them up and stop them from coming back out or factories for the automatons where you throw a grenade in blow them up they're pretty much the same thing just look different um, but it's basically stops the enemies from being able to swarm you and you know produce more numbers on top of this, you can find little side objectives, which are kind of similar to the main objective, like uploading data, collecting something, loading like a big ass gun with ammunition that you can then use as a stratagem. Um, there's loads of different little bits and bobs around the map, you know, collecting uh, resources that you can actually find the game's premium cur currency on the map uh, in the form of super credits, which you can then use to unlock things in the battle passes and, and whatnot. So there's lots of different things you can do on the map. But essentially, the, there's a main mission, a bunch of little side missions that if you complete them and you go around the map, you get more credits at the end of the, the match, and you can also unlock more battle medals. Now, the battle medals are used for unlocking stuff on the battle pass and unlocking cosmetics, other weapons, um, super credits. So it is very important that you do the side objectives. If you go into the mission, complete the main objective and get out, more often than not, you'll get some of the stuff that you were meant to get during the match but if you complete everything you'll get more resources you'll get more stuff and it also helps towards the liberation counter on each planet and this is where an interesting kind of mechanic for the game comes in as i said there is a liberation counter on each planet now as you liberate a planet it becomes higher and higher liberated eventually it'll become fully liberated and once you've fully liberated the planet this will unlock more regions of space that you can go into and fight the enemies so for example if we manage to liberate 
all of the bug planets up until the bug's homeworld, then you'd be able to land on the bug's homeworld and it locks a whole different kind of scenario where you're up against much tougher enemies, bigger hordes of enemies, one would assume, because we've not got to that stage yet. But the whole point is that the whole player base of Helldivers is working towards a goal to push the bugs back and beat them. And on top of that, we have a liberation counter on Super Earth. So in theory, there's going to be events and there's going to be situations where the bugs or the robots push us back and we have to fight for our own home planet and we have to fight them back on Earth. So that could have a completely different landscape. So I'd assume there's going to be a lot more um, buildings. We might be fighting in a cityscape if they were to invade Super Earth. We might be fighting in you know a suburban area if they were to invade Super Earth instead of you know a, a wasteland of a planet or a forest planet. So it adds this whole kind of thing where you're actually fighting towards a common goal. Everybody in your team is fighting towards a common goal to liberate planets, unlock more stuff, and just generally have fun while we're doing it. Now we'll just go into the whole super credits, um, the war bonds, all that kind of thing. So war bonds are essentially these things that you can either unlock using the premium currency or with just the medals that you get in the game. There's going to be a basic war bond and then a premium one because that's how the game's going to essentially fund them itself. Um, you can buy super credits and you can see here the prices. There is the superstore which you can use to buy cosmetics using the the premium currency but as i said you can pick up premium currency in game and if you look on the the basic war bond you can also find premium currency that you can unlock from playing that as well so you can find these kind of things on the planets and you can get them you don't need to necessarily pay for the premium stuff it is just a case that it's more effort obviously um as with most games you know you can unlock everything with effort so it isn't necessarily pay to win, it's just pay to make it easier. Now, as you can see, there's loads of different cosmetics and different things. You also unlock different weapons, like uh, this this gun here. This is the, the sniper rifle that I was talking about. It's a marksman's rifle, it's not really a proper sniper rifle. Um, then you've got this little almost Uzi-like handgun. Uh, and as you get deeper into the past, you can see you get emotes, you get different guns, you get these uh, and boosters, which increase the stats and different things that you have. This is one of the uh, <laughs> emotes. And the great thing about this emote is if two people use this emote together, they will in fact hug. So it's quite an interesting emote, quite an interesting interaction. And as you see, as you get more into the, the war bonds, the items that you unlock become more expensive and you need to work harder in order to get them um, until eventually you get to the end one where it is a far more significant chunk of war bonds. To give you an example, it's the maximum of four medals usually per match uh, for the ones that I've been doing at least maybe in harder difficulties you'll get more so this would be 10 matches to unlock this cape for example. So it's the more effort you put into it the more time it'll take for you to get these kind of things and you can't buy these little medals you can only unlock them through effort and as i said with the premium one it is the same unlocking mechanic even though like you've maybe paid money to get this you still need to put effort and play the game in order to unlock the different things on here it's not just an automatic oh i've got this stuff by just doing stuff you need to play the game together which i think is a great way to, way, way to do it i think these kind of things are valuable because it allows the developers to continue bringing out more content and doing more stuff and the game is only like 30 pounds so it's not an expensive game and it has a lot of potential i mean I'll be honest, it's got a very shallow kind of pool of things you can do. You go to missions, you do things, but for a lot of people, that is more than enough to justify playing a game. If you think of games like Call of Duty and Battlefield, it is a similar game loop. Yes, you're up against players, but it's a case of you land into an area and you fight until you win it. So for anybody that's into that type of gameplay, this is an absolutely fantastic game. And you never know, we might end up getting some sort of PvP mode at some point, because the framework for it is there. The framework to go up against other people is physically there. So you never know what they do, like they're going to do in the future. I'm looking forward to seeing their future endeavours, and I think this is a fantastic start to what will probably go down as a very, very great game.
So next, let's talk about the graphics of the game, because in this day and age, you sort of have to talk about that, don't you? It's actually a very pretty game. It's not the most graphically intense and most amazing looking game ever, but I love the landscapes, I love the environments, I love the cosmetics, and I love the overall design of the game and the the genre that it's in. Because it pretty much reminds me of Starship Troopers. Like, I'm not going to pretend it doesn't. It reminds me of Starship Troopers, and I love that movie. It's such a big nostalgia hit for me, and... I just love what they've went and done, and I just love every aesthetic about it. I love the the kind of campy, sci-fi, totalitarian, you know, dictator government. They say that they're they're uh, spreading democracy. We all know they're not. <laughs> and I just I love the look of it. I just think it's a very pretty and very cool game. It's not the most graphically intense game. It's not the the most innovative graphically, but it is great. So let's sum up this review by just kind of talking about the key talking points. So the game had a little bit of a shaky start with some online connectivity issues, but I need to say, if you don't expect connectivity issues for a launched game that has been incredibly popular and what plays online, then you're kidding yourself. If this was a single player game and you couldn't log in to play it, then yeah, that's a valid complaint. But on an online multiplayer game where you can't connect in and there's server problems on launch, it's perfectly normal. Even big games like world of warcraft have had issues like that on launching new expansions and whatnot it is perfectly normal it is perfectly acceptable they underestimated how popular the game was going to be as simple as that and that's not necessarily a bad thing don't get me wrong it's not the greatest thing in the world but i i've not had any connectivity issues since i've started playing it so i think they're probably there then we've got the gameplay. Now, the gameplay is absolutely fantastic and incredibly intuitive. Depending on the way you customise your Helldiver, you are going to get a lot of value, or not a lot of value, based on where you're playing it and how you're playing it. What I'd say is play around with stuff, figure out what works for you, and you are going to have a lot of fun. And I am having a lot of fun, and I'm going to continue having a lot of fun as I bounce back and forth between this and all the other games I'm playing. It is an absolutely great little satisfying shooter, and I am very eager to see where they go with this in the future. I cannot state enough, for a game costing only basically £30, it is such a good game. Like, it is a very cheap game to buy in this day and age. Most games are like 70, 70 um, pounds to just get all the bits and bobs. Um, and this is just a complete little package that just feels fun. Then we've got the, the pay-to-win mechanics. Um, there is none. You know, it's not pay-to-win, which is always great. Um, you can pay to make things easier, but, you know, you can get everything in-game and actually unlock the same things that people can unlock quicker through paying. It is definitely not a pay-to-win game, so I think that's there. And graphically, it is absolutely great. It's very stylized, and I am enjoying it. It's not the most graphically uh, ridiculous game, but it is very satisfactory. Um, overall, I would say Helldivers 2 is a hit. You know, I, I know it's a hit. I've seen all the, the things people are putting on it. It's got a really dedicated community that is backing it already. And I just cannot wait to see where this game goes because I think it's going to be one of the hits of the year. And it is very early in the year, but I think this is definitely going to be up there with one of the major successes of 2024. Either way, guys, what is your thoughts on Helldivers 2? Have you played it? Are you thinking about playing it? And if you have played it, What's your favourite thing about it? What's your 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 thoughts on where it's going to go? What's your thoughts on the potential that they, they could bring out PvP because there's the mechanics there to do that? And if you did enjoy today's video, don't forget to leave a like, a comment, and subscribe for more content in, related, well, in relation to this game and more content in relation to reviews about other games. Either way, guys, I'll catch you next time.